Does this guy know what he's doing? Does this elevation training mask worth it? Let's see what the sign has to say about it. So you finally cross paths with someone working out while looking like Bane from Batman or found this elevation training mask on the internet while searching for that little advantage in your training. Either way you're gonna need some proof to take it into account or a solid scientific explanation and this is what this video is all about. When they first came out, elevation training masks were marketed as simulators of high altitude training. High altitude training has been shown to improve many physiological parameters and is scientifically proven to increase performance when athletes return at sea level. So the first question that comes to our mind is, can these masks simulate altitude? The quick answer is no, but in order to understand that, we need to know what is different when we breathe at a high altitude. At high altitudes, the atmospheric pressure is reduced, the partial pressure of oxygen is also reduced. This gives the feeling of breathing in thinner air, which is why breathing at high altitude is more difficult. In turn, there is a reduced oxygenation of the blood, which leads to less oxygen being transported to and utilized by working muscles. This causes the body to fatigue you quicker. The body responds by increasing hemoglobin concentrations in blood, capillary density, mitochondrial volume, buffering capacity, and consequently increase oxygen transport to muscles. Eventually, these adaptations provide an athlete with performance advantages when returned at sea level. Notice that this process takes weeks, even months of living or training at high altitude and also the adaptations that you gain start to fade and normalize by the moment you get at sea level again. So the major difference of high altitude is the reduced partial pressure of oxygen. When it comes to the elevation training masks, it's pretty clear that they don't change the partial pressure of incoming air. All they do is simply reduce the total amount of airflow to the lungs. It's like trying to work out while breathing through a straw. It's gonna be harder, but you will still be breathing sea level air. So from a physiological perspective, there has yet to be any scientific evidence produced supporting the claim that these training masks imitate high altitude training. In fact, the only study that measured altitude relevant adaptations with this mask came to the conclusion that wearing an elevation training mask while participating in a 6 weeks high intensity cycle ergometer training program does not appear to act as a simulator of altitude. To my knowledge, there are no other studies that investigate the possibility that this mask simulates altitude. And this is reasonable because anyone with basic knowledge of physiology can understand something so obvious and therefore there is no need for further investigation. If you're searching for a way to simulate altitude, you're gonna need either an altitude mask or an altitude tent, both of which always come with a generator, also called hypoxicator, that provides the suitable hypoxic gas mixture. These devices can accurately simulate altitude from 0 to 21,000 feet and of course come to a much more expensive price. So if not simulating altitude, what does this mask actually do? The mask uses a valve system to reduce the amount of airflow to the lungs, forcing you to inhale deeper breaths. Therefore, your lungs are forced to work harder to increase respiration. This is what's known as restricted air training or respiratory muscle training. Respiratory muscle training is a well-known technique that aims to improve the function of the respiratory muscles through specific devices and exercise protocols. It was normally aimed for people who suffer from asthma, bronchitis and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. However, many people adopted it as part of their training as studies have shown that regular respiratory muscle training can increase a person's endurance during cardiovascular exercises or sport activities such as running and cycling. This was also confirmed by two recent reviews with meta-analysis. The first one was published in 2012. Scientists analyzed 46 original studies and found that respiratory muscle training improves endurance exercise performance in healthy individuals with greater improvement in less fit individuals and sports of longer duration. Similar results were found also in the second review from 2013. 21 original articles were analyzed and led to the conclusion that respiratory muscle training can improve sport performance. This training is performed with a big variety of proven-to-work devices and with specific training protocols that have been used on the aforementioned studies. So the main function of the elevation training mask is that it works as a device for respiratory muscle training. And this is also what the mask's website claims at the moment that I'm making this video. According to them, training with this mask can lead to improvements of respiratory compensation threshold, improvements of ventilatory threshold, and increases of power output at ventilatory threshold and power output at respiratory compensation threshold. 
All these are specific performance markers of the respiratory muscles and as you can see they all have the same reference of only one study from Porcari in 2016. In this study, authors had 24 moderately trained subjects complete 6 weeks of high intensity cycle ergometer training. Subjects were randomized into a mask or no mask group. The mask progressed from 914 meters to 3658 meters during the period of the training. The results show that only the mask group had significant improvements in ventilatory threshold, power output at ventilatory threshold, respiratory compensation threshold and power output at respiratory compensation threshold and these findings justify the website's claims on this part. But in the same study, the results regarding performance showed that although both the mask and the control group had significant increases in VO2 max and peak power output, there was no difference in the magnitude of improvement between groups. So training with a mask and without it was the same regarding performance improvements. Similar results regarding performance were found by a second study from 2017. In this study, Warren and colleagues investigated the effects of an elevation training mask on the VO2 max of male reserve officer training corps. Subjects were randomly assigned to either a mask or no mask group and completed three different training sessions for seven weeks. The first session was a two miles run and was performed in an interval style with 60 seconds of slow jogging followed by a 10 second sprint. The second session was an eight station body weight circus. The third one was a four miles run at a steady pace. At the onset of training, the resistance of the mask was set at 3,000 feet above sea level and gradually progressed to 12,000 feet during the period of the training. The results show that the elevation training mask did not cause a significant increase in VO2 max under the training conditions of this study. The authors stated that currently, the research on the effects of implementing this piece of equipment during training seems to be limited to the company's website. Finally, a third study by Bix and co-workers investigated the effects of the mask on cardiorespiratory fitness and pulmonary function through the use of a high-intensity interval training running program. 17 subjects were randomized into a mask or no mask group and participated in a 6 weeks training of 4 sessions per week. Each session included a warm-up followed by intervals of running at 80% of their heart rate reserve for 90 seconds and the 3 minutes of active rest at 50-60% to of their heart rate reserve. A total of 6 intervals were completed per session. The mask valves were set at a resistance of 9000 feet. There was no significant difference in predicted VO2 max between the control and the experimental groups. Fourth inspiratory vital capacity demonstrated no significant difference within subjects or between the two groups. The authors conclude that high-intensity interval training can be a viable method of improving VO2 max and pulmonary function. However, training masks such as the elevation training mask may not lead to greater overall improvements. As it was shown, the elevation training mask can improve the respiratory muscle's function, but all three studies conclude that it didn't affect performance. Lastly, we can see a section on the mask website with the name Strength Training Under Hypoxic Conditions Significantly Increases Serum Growth Hormone Levels. This comes with a reference of a study underneath it. So if the last allegation of the elevation training mask is that it increases growth hormone levels by causing hypoxic conditions, I must say that this is not proven by this study simply because they didn't use an elevation training mask. In this study, Corubian colleagues used a hypoxic gas mixture in order to simulate altitude corresponding to 4000 meters above sea level and not an elevation training mask. So I don't see how this study is related with the website's product and why it's concluded on the section that is supposed to prove with science that the mask works. To my knowledge, there are currently no studies to prove that training with this mask can increase serum growth hormone levels. The only study on aerobic exercise was conducted by Jagim and colleagues in 2018. In this study, 20 male recreational weightlifters completed two training sessions of back squat and bench press as well as a maximal effort sprint test with a mask and without a mask. The mask was adjusted to a resistance of 2743 meters. No differences were found in repetitions or total workload in back squat or bench press between conditions. Adverse side effects were reported in 12% of participants, which included feeling of lightheadedness, anxiety and discomfort. Also, a lower peak velocity was identified in all exercises in the mask group as well as a lower rating of alertness and focus for task. The results suggest that the use of the mask does not hinder the ability to achieve desired workloads. However, it appears to negatively influence peak velocity during both the back squat and bench press exercises, which may attenuate training outcomes over time. 
The mask may also negatively impact subjective ratings of focus and alertness during strenuous bouts of activity. Therefore, athletes who are training for maximal power development may want to exercise caution when considering implementing an elevation training mask into a training program as it may hinder velocity of movement during training and result in physical discomfort. Further, the use of an elevation training mask during training may impose a risk of adverse events which should also be considered prior to implementing the device into a training program. Still, some users claim they can breathe better after using this mask. But I think that it's quite obvious that if you restrict your airflow to the lungs by any means, you will feel your breathing much better once you take it away. So let's sum up the information. As we saw, elevation training masks do not simulate altitude. The main function of these masks is to work as respiratory training devices. This might be able to improve performance at some point, but this has not yet shown by any study. In addition, there is no scientific evidence to prove the idea that elevation training masks can increase serum growth hormone levels. And last, to my knowledge, all studies on these masks showed that it didn't improve performance and I think it's fair to say that the application of this device needs further investigation. If you are convinced by the effects of the elevation training mask on respiratory muscles, you can give it a try. My personal opinion is that when it comes to respiratory muscle training, it will be wiser to use a product that has already proven to work and has been used on the studies regarding respiratory muscle training. General guidelines for respiratory muscle training are to perform 30 breaths through a device against the adjustable resistance twice a day or 5 minutes of constant breathing through a device twice a day. After a reasonable period of time, you can adjust the training load according to the rules of progression and the needs of your sport. If you're not about respiratory muscle training and with the current knowledge that we have, I'd say that there is no reason to utilize an elevation training mask on your training until more research comes to support it. So that was the video guys, if you liked it give me a thumbs up and if you don't want to miss out on all the new videos that are coming, consider subscribing. Until next time, let me know about your opinion on elevation training masks by leaving a comment below.